Perfect. So we are recording this session and we'll send this out to all the attendees as well as the folks who um, wanted to attend but could not make it. A little um, introduction before we get started. Um, Sarah, can you see my screen? I can. Okay, awesome. So um, as a SAGE authorized partner, we definitely wanted to get the information out there about uh, the new offering of Stage 300 CRE uh, mobile projects. So this is something a lot of folks did not know that they had um, a free license of if they did have uh, project management. So we'll get started, talk a little bit about TAG for the folks who are not uh, current customers. Uh, we founded the company, well, Rob Scher is uh, the president uh, who started the company in 1996. We work um, in a number of different facets surrounding the accounting space, um, particularly Sage Construction Software uh, comes from our roots in construction. So we do offer controller, CFO services, um, and uh, we offer a number of different things um, for companies who don't have uh, someone in-house or maybe might need someone uh, temporary in the interim. Uh, I want to um, say hello to David, um, since I did see you just joined um, by phone. Um, maybe you can uh, tell us uh, what company you're, company you're with so that we could kind of tailor our presentation a little bit. Hi there. Yeah, this is David with LB3 Contracting and Enterprises in Lakeside. We're a mass excavation and grading company. Perfect. Okay. And I remember there were a couple of things that um, you were particularly interested in, so I'll, um, I'll make sure um, that we touch on those things. Um, but uh, for the folks who oops, sorry, um, are not familiar, Sage is uh, definitely a leader in the construction space. So there are a number of different statistics that support that with our uh, users and um, just the amount of experience that we have uh, developing these products. So particularly Sage 100 contractor and Sage 300 construction real estate. Um, these two are the main accounting systems and of course surrounding that Sage has also um, added a number of different enhancements uh, to the product umbrella. So uh, definitely mobile projects is something that is new and has a lot of uh, different features on the roadmap. So we will make sure to definitely go through all of those. Um, our team uh, has uh, fully certified Sage consultants that um, work within the IT and accounting space. So we have a, a developed a specific seven step process to make sure that our customers are successful in all of the different elements of software that they implement. So um, a little bit about our presenter today, Olivia Romer. She is a SAGE certified consultant and um, has a background extensive in uh, construction, particularly concrete. So. She is very knowledgeable and super experienced. We're excited to um, have her present all this information. So we will go ahead and make her the presenter now um, and get us started. Thank you, Leilani. Uh, good morning, everyone. So today I'm going to show you uh, Sage Mobile Projects. So Sage Mobile Projects is a new um, mobile solution that Sage uh, released specifically for Sage 300 construction and real estate. Um, this is tied directly to the project management module. And when you have a, a license to the project management module, you get one license of Sage mobile projects for free. Okay, so that you can take advantage of today. Um, the only thing is you have to be on the most recent version of Sage 300. So you have to be in a minimum on version 17 and you have to have the SQL replicator installed 
uh, on your server as well, because this takes advantage of some of the features within SQL Replicator. So with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, show you the product. So here is the home page for Sage um, Mobile Projects. Within here, currently you can do daily field reports and RFIs. Um, slowly but surely, they're going to um, they're going to add uh, additional features that are within project management. So change requests, change orders, submittals, and so on and so forth. But right now they have daily field reports and RFIs that are available today. And they're gonna slowly roll out the other capabilities. And then just like these two, they're going to push that information back to the project management module. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is open up a field report here. And you'll notice it has all of my field reports. So this also um, is the same as what I see inside the project management module. So I'm just gonna open up one of these field reports here. And you'll notice I have all the same tabs that I would normally have. So here under weather and site conditions, I can add what the weather is. It's going to get the weather from where my location is of that address. So on this job, this is the zip code of and the address location of this particular job site. So it's going to pull in the weather and temperature and humidity information from there. Um, if there was a different site, I could change that. And I could do this multiple times per day. So if the weather, let's say, changed in the middle of the day, I could add that change of weather here. So I can have as many different weather and site condition um, information here on this tab. Then in the next area, I can put uh, labor information. Now this is more generalized, hey, this employee worked this many hours, et cetera, and so on. If I wanted a little bit more detailed information, I would use this payroll time um, tab here. This payroll time tab will actually connect to your Sage 300 CRE payroll and allows you to pick your employees, pick your pay ID, put how much time they were at the job site. If you're using extras, you can pick the extra. And the cost codes are gonna pull directly from your budget, okay? And then when I save and close this, now this information is going to be on my daily field report. If I want to, I can then submit that time to payroll and it'll push it to my Sage 300 Construction and Real Estate Payroll Module, okay? So it makes it nice to be able to have that information quickly and it interfaces completely. I can also put some subcontractor information. Again, this is pulling from my uh, vendor list. So I can put, hey, who was the subcontractor? how many people did they have working on the job, et cetera, and so on. Close this. I can also put what pieces of equipment I used on the job site. Again, this is pulling from my equipment list. So if I'm using the equipment module within Sage 300, I can also pull all my equipment from that list here. So here, let's say I'm using this backhoe. I can click there that I'm using the backhoe. If I was using it from an um, renting agency like Sunbelt or some of the other rental agencies, I could put who that is so I know that it's a rented piece of equipment versus an owned piece of equipment. And so, and keep a uh, log of how many hours I used it, if I had any idle time, what any of the readings were, whether it's odometers or hours used or things of that nature. I'm gonna go ahead and save this as well. I can also enter any um, materials that were received. So I can put uh, receiving ticket numbers, the time, 
who we purchased it from, where did we receive it by, if it, there was a freight company that delivered it, who that was, what purchase order it was associated with, et cetera. On here, I can put what my work activities were. So what cost code we were working in on this day. So let me come over here. Maybe we were doing some excavating and backfilling. Um, I can put, you know, what we did in the description field. Um, here we are saying that this is per cubic yard. So I could say, you know, how much cubic yardage of dirt I excavated or how much I put in through backfill. And then I can also use this notes tab to add additional information onto the daily field report. Uh, next is the extra, extras work orders and change orders tab. This is so I can add um, additional information so that I know that one of these things needs to be done. Okay, this is just basic information. This is not creating a change request or a change order or a work order ticket per se, but it's just uh, keeping this information so I can notify the office or whoever I need to notify so that they can enter um, or create a formal change request, change order, or work order ticket. All right, then I can also uh, add any events that might have happened. So if it's an accident or a safety violation, or maybe I had to dismiss a worker, uh, this list can be customized, so I can put any type of information that I want in here. And then this pulls from my employees list, and this pulls from my vendors list as well. So if one of the subcontractors on the job site uh, got hurt, I can put that in here, a notation of that um, onto my daily field report. I can also add what type of uh, visitors we had to the job site. So maybe an inspector came today um, and I want to notate that or any other type of visitor that might have showed up on the job site. And then the last piece is journal entries. I don't know anyone who uses this function, but it is still available if you needed to do that as well. Okay. Once I save this, all the information that I entered here inside mobile projects is automatically synced with my Sage 300 construction and real estate software back at the office. So now all the office staff can see exactly what I entered into this daily field report. I also have a place to add attachments. So I can add job site photos, um, you know, any other documents that I want, I can snap a picture of it and attach it to the daily field report. And then um, it's going to automatically fill in who this was prepared by based on the last daily field report. If I wanted to change it, I could pick from this list here and find the appropriate person that filled out this daily field report. It's also going to auto number it based on the number of field reports we've issued for this particular job. Once I finalize the daily field report, I can no longer make any edits or changes to this daily field report. So I would make sure not to um, mark it as finalized as, as until I am sure that this particular item is complete. Then the next piece is the RFIs. So here within the RFIs, it's going to auto number it for me and it's going to pre-fill it with today's date. I can put the subject of this RFI. The two is going to pull directly from my job setup. So if I've said that it goes to this Jack Dorset, it's going to pull that information from the job setup that I have inside the project management module in Sage 300. I can carbon copy whoever I want on this particular list um, as well. 
and I can select any drawings that I might have put on this list if it applies to a drawing. And then I can ask my question, whatever that is. If there's going to be a schedule impact, I can put that in there. And if there's going to be an impact to cost, I can put that information in here as well. Because what I can do is then once there is a cost impact, I can take this RFI information and I can later create that into a change order if necessary. Once I save that, I can also submit this RFI. And what that's going to do, it's going to email it to the user in the to or and the carbon copy area. And it's going to email them a PDF copy of this RFI format. Once I receive the answer to my question, I can put that information into here. And I can forward that information to any other additional individuals who might need to know the answer to this RFI. Again, this pushes the information back to your back office. So anyone at the office would then be able to see all the information inside this RFI that you filled out. So that is just a quick overview of Sage Mobile Projects. Um, I did wanna open it up to questions. So if you guys have any questions, please, uh, now is the time to ask. Anyone? Olivia, I've got a question. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. I know that we said that the payroll module or the payroll section where you enter employee time, uh, mm -hmm. there's no process in, built into this module. I'm wondering if, uh, and I don't think we use the payroll module inside Sage either, but if we were to use this and Managers uh, form and list all the time. Mm -hmm. Create basically a log of what happened on the job that day, uh -huh. and that go into a into the payroll module or into some table, and then us be able to create from that a report of that information that we could then take out to Excel to do what we need with it after the fact. Yeah, definitely. So it is going to push it to the payroll module, but from that from that point, you could definitely pull all that uh, time entry information into Excel through an inquiry, and then you know send it to whoever you know needs to see it or review it, or um, you could use it with any third party like ADP or P Paychecks, et cetera. Okay. So even though it doesn't have an approval process, if we could. If we could get it into the form of an Excel file, then I could send that Excel file back to the foreman and say, does this all look fine? Do you approve everything on your job for this day? And if he says, yes, that's that's my approval process. Yes, yes, you could, absolutely. All right, Yeah. so is this a possibility? All right, thank yeah. you. Yes, you're welcome. All right, are there any other questions? All right. Well, thank you everyone for your time. If you think of any other additional questions, please just reach out to us. Um, you can contact me at olivia.romer at teamtag.net, um, or you can also reach out to Leilani, and she would be able to help you with this as well. Thank you everyone for your time. Have a great Wednesday. Thank you. Bye.